for the 2022 Lexus NX, Lexus says this is a brand new chapter for the brand. First of all, it's the first ever Lexus with a plug-in hybrid and it's completely revamped from the inside out. And today we're gonna to take a detailed look at all the exterior details, the interior details, and of course, we're gonna get it out on the road for a test drive. Let's get started. Real quick before we get started, my name is Nolan. I do full reviews like this every single week, but also if you wanna skip around to different parts of the video, look in the description below. I've got them timestamped so you can skip around to whatever you want. But also, if you wanna see the plug-in hybrid version of this Lexus, I did a video on that a couple of months ago, so be sure to check for that in the description below. But let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, as we take a look at the exterior details, it's similar in size and looks, but this is fully redesigned and has a brand new improved platform. Now, starting right up front, Lexus is gonna give you standard a one-piece spindle grill. So this is revised compared to what it was before, still a large grill, and it will be even different with the F-Sport models. And I have a video of the F-Sport plug-in hybrid if you wanna see that. But you also get LED headlights standard. These are the optional headlights, which I'll talk about, but you've got the integrated LED daytime running light in there instead of separate. Plus, you've got LED fog lights right down here. One thing you'll notice with the fog lights is there's a little light inside next to it, which is actually a cornering light. And at night, these optional headlights are adaptive as well. They're the triple beam adaptive headlights. And be sure to check out my night video if you wanna see how well they do. Now the paint color on this 2022 NX is called Caviar. It's basically just a black color, but it does have a nice metallic-y sheen. And wheels will differ a little bit depending on the trim, but with our luxury package, we've got these silver finish multi-spoke wheels to give it a little bit more of a luxurious flair. Good news about the mirror is, first of all, you've got the turn signal in them, you've got blind spot indicators in them, and they're also automatic dimming and heated, so no bright blinding lights in those mirrors. Dimensionally, the NX is 183 and a half inches long, so very similar dimensions to what it was before. It's just a little bit longer, but We'll talk about space and all of that in just a second. And as we come to the back, it's got a little bit of a different profile as far as kind of the squatted rear end. They shortened up the uh, sideline on the vehicle to condense the cabin is what they say. And you've got LED taillights as well, full LED. So you've got an LED blinker, good to see, LED taillights. And then this LED light bar running all the way across and integrating in with that other side. And you'll always get the badging on the back and we have the 350 all-wheel drive like i said be sure to check out the plug-in hybrid if you're curious about that one in the description below now as we move to the cargo area of the nx as you'd expect with a luxury vehicle lexus gives us the kick sensor option to where you can have a hands-free activated open and close and you might expect some improvements of cargo space and there is some behind the second row but overall it's actually kind of disappointing it's still not super spacious but let's go ahead and check it out now a closer look at this cargo area first of all some things that i noticed right away is that there are several little hooks so look at that that's a cargo net or grocery bag hook you've got a little net over there you've got a tie down but then on each side you even get a hook right here that folds out so you can sling grocery bags on there you've got a 12 volt power outlet so that's really awesome to see and overall compared to the last generation this back seat or space behind the back seat is actually a little bit better and you can see this cargo or this cargo net or cargo cover right up above the one negative to me is that underneath of here we don't have a spare tire you do get some extra space under there and some extra space there but there's no spare tire because we have run flat tires unfortunately one cool thing i don't believe lexus had this before but you've got power folding seats here and with the seats folded, you get about 47 cubic feet, which is actually less than what it was before. And compared to a comparable size RAV4, that's about 70 cubic feet. So this is definitely lacking in overall space, but I think behind the second row, the space is sufficient and the underfloor storage is definitely nice. Now moving on to the key fob, the key fob looks exactly the same compared to what it was before. It looks nice, it's slim, it fits into your pocket well. You know, some Lexuses you can press the lock button three times and remote start it. This one is not doing that for whatever reason. You can do it on your phone with an app, but after a certain period of time, you're gonna have to pay every month or every year to use that. But this is a brand new door handle. First of all, it's got the touch sensitive smart key to where you lock it, the mirrors fold right there. But on the inside, it's called the digital latch to where there's literally just a little button in there. Put your hand in there and then you push a little touch pad to open the door. Now, I don't like that because it's electronically controlled and I accidentally killed the battery on this somehow. And I had a heck of a time figuring out what I needed to do here. You have to pop this off in order to access the keyhole. 
And then you can't just push this button because it's dead, it won't open. You have to actually unlock it with the key and then pull this emergency release handle on the outside to get it to work. So it's just extra complexity that's unnecessary in my opinion. But the other thing is Lexus now gives you the smart or the uh, digital key to where you can use your phone as a key. Plus you have remote parking available through your phone as well. Now let's take a look at these front seats. So we have the circuit red interior. So what do you think of this? This is the optional red leather that comes on our trim, trim level. You won't get leather on every trim though. You'll start with New Lux, a synthetic material, but I like these seats. They've got a comfortable amount of cushioning. They've got really good side bolstering as well. The headrest is a little bit intrusive, but I'll talk more about that in a second. But what do you think of the red? And then down here, the upper models are going to give you four-way lumbar support as well. That also is not every trim level, but you've got tilt, height, reclining, all the necessary functions, nothing extravagant, but several and plenty of adjustments. On the door, you'll also find memory settings, which include an entry exit system. That means the steering wheel can even move for you power adjustably. So you've got power tilt and telescoping, and it can automatically move to your preferred position. Heated seats are going to be standard, but this one comes with ventilated seats, which is part of the premium or luxury package as well. Overall, I've really liked these seats. I've spent a good amount of time in here, a couple hundred miles. My only complaint was right away, I felt like the headrest seemed to be a little bit intrusively far forward. I reclined my seat, and then I've been pretty much okay since then. And the convenience of the heated seats are right here on the screen for you and your passengers. Same with the heated steering wheel. You can even have it be automatic depending on what your temperature is set to, to where it can automatically ventilate or heat. Now moving to the back seat, you get the same circuit red leather seats back here. They look nice and I thought there was more room overall, but really it's still mediocre at best. So one nice thing is that on the door, you get nice material up above and down below with a soft armrest and bottle holder. And sitting behind myself, I'm five foot nine, so this is where I would normally have it. I've got good enough knee space and foot space. It's not terrible. I thought it would be more improved uh, over the last generation, but it's still not a super spacious back seat. But you do get ventilation back here with air conditioning vents. You even get heated seats. Plus you've got three different types of charging ports down there. So that is awesome. Both the front and row seats get the digital latch system right here to where it will not let you open the door if it senses a vehicle or a pedestrian coming like a bicycle behind you. So you don't hurt them and they don't hurt you. There's also a center folding armrest with some average size little bottle holders. And headroom is actually surprisingly good. I believe headroom was one thing that was improved overall. It's still a pretty narrow back seat, but overall room is good enough. Probably for most people, the seats don't scoot forward and backwards but you can recline a little bit, so it's not too bad. Now, as we hop inside this 2022 NX, in my opinion, this is a vast improvement over what it was before. In some other comments that I've read, people aren't as big a fan of it, fan of it as I am, but I think it's much more functional, it's just nicer overall, and you got better technology. So first of all, over on the door, you even get some open pore wood trim over here. We have the upgraded Mark Levinson audio, and this entire door panel is just soft and nice. This is a softer material, nice and soft on your arm, and a good padded armrest. And then we've got the digital latch function. So like I showed you on the outside with the touch sensitive, it's also touch to open the door. In case of an emergency, you can pull on this and open it too, so it's a real lever, but still not a huge fan of that. I like this big door handle right here, and then you've got all automatic one-touch windows and nice layout of controls. Extra little sneaky cubby right underneath of there with a the soft lining. The steering wheel is heated and leather wrapped, and it's quite comfortable to hold on to, and unlike old Lexuses, even this top portion is heated too, so it's not just this small section. The entire wheel is heated, and it's a totally new layout of controls, and I'll show you. There's no dedicated button or labeling for these controls. So let me show you. So this is the touch tracer technology that can show up on the head-up display or on uh, the main display if you don't have the head-up display labeled. But you can change different aspects of this. And honestly, it's a little bit annoying because there's some times where if you have to, if you want to do just a basic control, you have to push the button twice or it's not on the right page to do what you want to do. You can customize these to an extent, but I still wish we had some more traditional buttons. You will get paddle shifters on here. You'll also get rain sensing windshield wipers. And then this digital display in the middle is not fully customizable. It's a pretty large digital display, but it doesn't give you quite as much information as I thought. So it's still a nice layout and you can customize the layout of this a little bit, but you can scroll through information on the bottom. Otherwise, it's pretty uh, pretty standard 
in terms of customization. Now, of course, Lexus gives you push button start right up there. And then take a look at this screen. This is the upgraded 14 inch screen, which is an optional screen. It is touch screen as well. Some of the old Lexuses were not, but this one is. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's a wireless charging mat right there, so you don't have to be plugged in. You can have yourself wirelessly charging and have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay up here. The Lexus infotainment is also better as well. So this screen is very nice. There's a lot of customization on here. I like the layout and the functionality of this for the most part. You can quickly and pretty easily go to different settings and customize different things like I showed you. But overall, I like this screen and I really don't have any problems with it. You can even make it like a darker screen or let it be a lighter screen like this. But then even some of your climate controls are on and integrated into the touchscreen. So this is fairly interesting. I like how they're large buttons so you can quickly touch those without having to look too much. You can quickly access different climate control settings. And this has S-Flow, which directly vents air to occupied seats. So you're not going to waste as much of your energy and you're gonna get cooled off faster. And then you have a shortcut for some of this stuff. So you can quickly go through your head up display, some comfort and convenience things, your uh, lane keeping system and, and driver assist stuff like that. So you can quickly pull those up. It is more touchscreen oriented than a lot of older Lexuses, but I think it's easier to use than some of those older Lexuses too. Dual zone climate control right here as well. And now we even have more voice activation and better voice recognition. Now let's take a listen to this Mark Levinson audio system. It's a 17 speaker system, 1800 watts. It is the premium sound system. Plug in your headphones because I've got binaural audio going. Let's go. You still get a volume knob down here and a couple of physical buttons. And then there's the 360 degree camera that we can see right here. So it's this bird's eye view camera overhead. And the Lexus panoramic view monitor can be uh, automatically turned on. You can turn it on with your steering wheel if you go into reverse. So I'm gonna go into reverse and then we'll get an idea. You got a regular backup camera, dynamic lines, and then you can even tap on different parts of the screen. So if you wanna know if you're closer on one part of the vehicle, it's easier to do that. Like I showed you down there, there's a wireless charging mat, but you also have your drive mode, so Eco, Sport, and Normal. There's a couple of USB, different USB ports right there, a little storage area, and then I like this. So this, you can have your phone on there and then slide it out of the way and have an extra storage cubby down there and a 12 volt power outlet. So I like the functionality of this more than before. I don't like the piano black right here. It's just probably not gonna look very good in a while, but you've got quite a few different buttons right here, including your auto stop, start, brake hold, uh, electronic parking brake, and then the bottle holders are good size, and I think they're in a great location to where they don't impede your storage, your shifting, anything like that. I think it just works very well in this new NX, much better than it did. Plus, we've got a soft armrest, very soft actually, and it comes pretty far forward, and you've got this split folding action, so you can fold it up on your side or the passenger side, and you've got really good space in here. Lexus gives you a soft opening, softly lined, and locking glove box. And one of my favorite things is this mirror. So this is a digital mirror that we've seen from Toyota to where it can be just a regular automatic dimming mirror with garage controls, or it can be a digital mirror so you can see perfect crystal clear vision behind you. And I think it's even better in this vehicle because our visibility out the back is not very good. You get a vanity light and mirror over here, and Lexus gives us the entire visor sliding out. And then overhead, we get the optional panorama glass. So we've got a panoramic roof from Lexus. You can open up this entire shade or open up this top portion, but it's a pretty good sized glass here. And then at night, we have the nature-inspired ambient illumination, which is 14 themes in 64 different colors, which is nice to see in the NX compared to what we had before, which was basically nothing. Now under the hood, this is one of the biggest changes for Lexus for this 2022 model year, including the first ever plug-in hybrid. I got to drive that plug-in hybrid that comes from the RAV4 Prime a little while before this one, and it's definitely fun. You've got about 37 miles of electric range before the gas kicks in, and it's the fastest Lexus NX ever. Lexus will also give you the option of a base 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine with just mediocre 203 
horsepower. They also give you a regular hybrid carried over from the RAV4 with about 39 miles per gallon combined. But under the hood here, we've got the 2.4 liter twin scroll turbo four cylinder that's direct and port injected that gives you 275 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque paired with an eight speed automatic. Those numbers are way better than the turbo from the previous NX and it definitely drives like that on the inside as well. And I love how it's direct and port injected. So we should still have some of that Lexus reliability. Miles per gallon in this turbo is 22 in the city and 28 on the highway with all wheel drive. And with that much torque, that's not too bad for an all wheel drive. The one negative that I see is that this actually says from Lexus premium fuel 91 or higher is required. All right, let's go ahead and jump this thing off with our point of view test drive. Now, I'm going to move this mirror into the digital mirror for a little bit, and then I'll kind of flip it back to the other one. So you kind of know what it's like to have that running at the same time. Now, I gave you my first impressions, but now that we're behind the wheel, you'll kind of get an idea of what it's like to be the one driving. We'll talk about ride comfort, road noise, handling day-to-day -day driving and just my overall thoughts so one thing to know is that this is fully loaded with the whole suite of the lexus safety system plus 3.0 so you've got upgraded safety systems all around we've got the radar crews lane keeping blind spot indicators it even lets you know if you have cross traffic coming so if i'm sitting here or if there's a, a wall right here i'm trying to go around and i can't see it'll let me know if there's vehicles coming across from the front or from the back. Now, acceleration on here is better than it was before. We have a bigger engine, more horsepower, more torque, and we'll get on it in a second because it does drive fairly responsively and pretty peppy. The eight-speed transmission in here is also um, quite responsive, actually. It's been much better than what most transmissions have been. So let's go ahead and get pedal down. Zoom, and it gets going. So this actually has an engine sound enhancement to where it's probably just gonna make this little turbo sound a little better than what it would without that, but it's just the way it goes. Pedal down again. I know that's not what this is about, but it's actually pretty responsive. It's not a fun vehicle to drive. And I actually got to drive the uh, plug-in hybrid before, which was really responsive because it's faster. It's got the electric torque and you can go on all electric. If you want to check that out, look in the description below. But handling wise, steering wise, I like the weight of the steering. For this type of a vehicle, it's about perfect. It's not too heavy, it's not too light, but you still feel a fair connection to the road. And overall, it's improved over last time around, last generation, but it still doesn't feel sporty or super planted like some vehicles. The F Sport is and will be better at that though. Ride comfort, we just went over kind of a, a bump you know, at the, the beginning and end of some bridges, and it soaks bumps up so well. This even has larger wheels, uh, which usually lends to not as good of ride comfort. But overall, I would say ride comfort is very good and improved over last generation. You can run over some railroad tracks in this, and it's pretty comfortable. I'm really pleasantly surprised with that overall. Now, I just put it in sport mode. I'm gonna flip this back to kind of the normal mirror right there. So we're in sport mode. Once we get over this hill, I'll get on it a little bit so you get an idea of how well this turbo goes. We also have paddle shifters, but they're kind of slow and I never really feel the desire to use them on here. All right. Pedal down. That's not bad for a luxury crossover. It's not necessarily good either, but it is better than what it was. And the handling is fair enough. It's far from sporty, and I'd never really want to be, drive like that with this kind of a vehicle. But just to give you an idea, this is more of a casual, comfortable cruiser with a peppy and responsive enough powertrain. I really haven't had any complaints with this eight speed. I mean, it's been responsive. It's responded when I needed to. And right now you can probably hear some wind noise. It is a really windy day right now uh, with gusts around 40 to 50 miles an hour. And it doesn't really look like it out here right now, but it's definitely windy. I can hear some wind noise 
but Lexus actually improved the wind noise. The road noise is better, or noise overall is better, but with the run flat tires in here, that gives us more road and tire noise than I would really want to see. Now I have the lane keeping system radar cruise control on. This is just a very small little thing right here, but if I kind of veer off, it's gonna pull me back to the middle. If I accidentally veer off, it'll pull you back to the middle. It's not as good as some where it'll just like basically drive you for a while. It'll let me know pretty quickly that I need to put my hands back on the wheel. But it's done a good job with its radar cruise control braking and uh, accelerating and keeping distances. I can tell it is improved over the last generation. And then one last little bit here, like I talked about the road noise, wind noise, high speed noise is good. If you're on a smoother road, you're gonna like it. If you have to drive on rough textured, kind of county roads, country type roads, you're not gonna like it as much. It should be quieter on these roads, but a lot of that has to go with the run flat tires. It's not bad, should be better, just to give you an idea. But overall, day to day driving, I like the driving dynamics. I like the large optional screen on here. The head-up display is helpful if you want to have it on. You can always turn it off. The only thing I wish I would change is the functionality of these touch tracer buttons to where you don't have to think or look as much and be distracted to do things with the steering wheel controls. But just a small complaint. You'll get used to it very quickly. But let's go ahead and wrap things up. Now to wrap things up on this 2022 Lexus NX, this definitely is a new chapter for Lexus with the bringing of the first plug-in hybrid Lexus. But more specifically, I feel like Lexus made this a much more competitive small luxury SUV. They made big improvements in technology, improved the safety aspects, and made it so much better to drive than it was before as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this 2022 Lexus NX. Is this something you would consider? And do you like the new chapter and direction that Lexus is going? Leave your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you like this video. Hope you have a great day. We'll catch you next time.